My S23 is finally here, and this is the graphite color, and I think that it looks absolutely fantastic. It, the pictures on the website did not do it justice, so I, I'm glad I got it. Uh, it is a little frustrating that when I pre-ordered it, it took like basically a month to get here. So <laughs> probably a lot of people that were interested in it have bought it already. But here's the great thing about making a video like this, because I'm going to test this phone out. I'm going to switch from my S23 Ultra to my S23. And this is, I'm just going to be upfront with you here. This is not a permanent switch. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do this for a couple of weeks so that I can fully test out the phone, test out the battery life. A lot of people are really interested in this phone because one, smaller form factor, not everybody wants a big gigantic phone. And also some other distinguishing factors, $1199, $799, $400 price difference. And that shows up in a big way, especially when you talk about paying for it up front, or if you traded something in, or if you're financing it. There's a big difference between a payment for a $799 phone and a $1199 phone, especially when you look at a lot of carriers that have like trade in this phone, get $1,000 credit, whatever. So I think that there's an important place for phones like this. And it's interesting because this is actually considered a small phone now. It's got a 6.1 inch screen on it. And it's funny because if you look back to the days of yesteryear and older phones, I mean, a 6.1 inch screen used to be really big because we had these massive bezels all the way around the screen, big form factors. We couldn't jam things in in such a small package on a phone like this. So I like having a compact form factor. If you watch the channel for any length of time, you know that I am a big iPhone SE fan. I like the small compact form factor, one-handed use. I like the Touch ID on there. I'm not a big Apple fan, but I love the iPhone SEs. And the iPhone 8 Plus is my all-time favorite iPhone, and it had a 5.5-inch screen on it, but it was a pretty big phone, right? So talking about the S23, the regular guy, there's a lot of good things to offer here, but if you look around the landscape, everything is so big now. Uh, this really is considered a small phone when you look at most of the phones that are out now, 6.3-inch, 6.4-inch, 6.67, 6.8. There are some massive phones out there. I mean, case in point, this right here, the S22 Ultra, this is a gigantic phone compared to this. 6.8 inch screen, 6.1 inch screen. But whenever you look at them side by side, there's a huge size difference. So a lot of people don't like the curved edge display. A lot of people don't want the stylus. A lot of people don't care about having a 200 megapixel camera with 100 times super zoom on it, right? So you want something that has flagship specs. You want something that's gonna be more affordable. You want something that's mostly top of the line. And there are some trade-offs here. You, you don't get Quad HD Plus with this. You don't get the LTPO screen that throttles down to one hertz and saves you some battery that route. You don't get the big 200 megapixel camera. You don't get the macro mode, which I actually, I really love macro pho photography. But they have stepped up in some other areas. Like if you look at the S23 now, it has the same selfie camera as the S23 Ultra. Last go around, we had the much nicer 40 megapixel selfie camera in the S22 Ultra as opposed to the smaller, more reeky dink camera in the S22 and the S22 Plus. So now it has the same selfie. It has the same quality screen as far as AMOLED and brightness. So maximum 1750 nits brightness, nice package, 3900 milliamp battery. We've got a little bit extra battery over the previous model. If you remember my videos last year, I really liked the S22. I liked the way that it looked. I liked the form factor. I liked the one-handed use. What I didn't like was the battery life, which was utter trash. So two things here that made me buy this phone. One, I wanted to give it another whirl because I liked the S22 so much, but they changed two fundamental things. They added a little extra battery, which we've seen how far that can go. Even though we just got a slight battery upgrade in the Z Flip 4 over the Z Flip 3, that combined with the newer chipset with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 1 gave it that extra battery life that it needed to make it a viable daily driver. This should be the same. Now, I know some people probably had an okay experience with the S22, but if you look at the video I made uh, talking about the bad battery life and my experience, I still, to this day, get comments talking about how trash the battery life is on the S22. So, a little bit bigger battery, but... We have the fantastic Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, which I and everybody else have been raving about that's in the S23 Ultra, and it's also in this other phone that I like a lot, the OnePlus 11. And don't worry, I'm going to make a comparison video between the OnePlus 11 
and also the S23. And I'm also going to make a comparison video kind of contrasting against even the Pixel 7. So I'm going to make quite a few videos about this phone. I know I'm a little late to the game getting it, but there's still quite a few people that have been in the comments that are really interested in seeing this phone. So I bought it. I bought this with my own money. And if you watch my channel, you know I don't get a whole lot of phones sent to me, especially not from Samsung. So it's not like I have any sort of monetization incentive here to make a video about this to try and sell you on it because, I mean, I'm not really getting anything for it. <laughs> I, paid for, I paid for this with my own money. So I really am interested in this, interested to test out the battery life. I want to see how it works out. But there's a lot of niceties here. I mean, the camera on here is not a slouch. It's not like it's got bad cameras. It's not like it's got a, a bad screen. It's still got the 120 hertz refresh rate. It's still got the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner that's on here, which I'm a big fan of. The ultrasonic fingerprint scanner is the most secure fingerprint scanner that we can get under the screen when it comes to these modern phones. It's not the typical optical one like you get with a OnePlus or you get with the Pixel phone. So I think there's a lot to like here. I think if you've been on the fence about it, then hopefully I'll be able to help you with some of the content as I'm able to test out this phone. So I'm going to put my SIM card in it because that's the only fair thing to do to test it out. So as much as it might pain me to not have my gigantic S23 Ultra for the next tidbit of while, I am going to put my SIM card in here. I'm going to carry this around. Uh, I did learn my lesson. Uh, I have already ordered a, I ordered a case with it. I ordered the Samsung leather case because I love the Samsung leather cases. It's not here yet. It'll be here in a couple of days. Oddly enough, that it's lagging behind the actual S23 itself. So I ordered a Spigen, a slim case, and I've also got a screen protector that's going to be here this morning. So I haven't put this in my pocket. I haven't done anything with it other than just set it up and do the full charge to get it to 100% so I can start working with it. So just some expectations here because I posted about it on Twitter and a couple other places and immediately someone's like, oh, hey, what do you think about it? Tell me your review of the phone. I'm like, well, seeing as I've had it for an hour and a half, I absolutely love it. <laughs> so I got to use this for a little while to give you some meaningful content on it as far as like a full review. And that was that's just one of the downsides when it comes to actually having to buy these things as opposed to Samsung sending them to me. But the great thing is, is whenever I get one of these phones, you know that I not beholden to anybody. I don't have to follow talking points. I don't have to use a reviewer guide and say this and say that. I don't have to get approval. I don't have somebody lingering over my head saying, oh, if you don't say good things about the phone, we're going to yank it away from you. So I can say whatever I want, completely free, unfettered. And I think that's, you guys know that I do that anyway, <laughs> regardless of the, the product that I get. But I'm going to use this, test it out. SIM card is going to be in it. Going to connect it with my Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, test that out, because, of course, that's something that can impact battery life as well. But the whole story here is not battery life. This is a good phone, and the S22 is a very good phone. It was just handicapped by poor battery life. So if they were able to really get some meaningful battery life in this, if we can get, let's say, six, six and a half hours of screen on time out of it, if it lasts comfortably all day, take some shots with it, see how the primary camera looks, see if it holds up like a lot of the phones did this last year. I think it's going to be a great option for a lot of people because competition is king. I'd really like to see them come down to about $699 on this, but Samsung's not going to do that. When you take a look at the competition, you look at the Pixel 7, $599. You take a look at the OnePlus 11, $699. But it's been on sale a lot for $599 too. So I think right now $600 is really about that sweet spot whenever it comes to what people want for an entry-level flagship phone that offers most of the bells and whistles but there are some trade-offs, like you're not getting the big massive screen, you don't get the curved edge display, which some people don't even like that, so that's not even much of a selling point anymore, but you don't get the bigger cameras, you don't get the big 5,000 milliamp battery, you don't get the extras like the S Pen, so that's where some of these cost savings come into play. So $799 is pretty much like the upper end of the entry-level flagship spectrum. And I call it entry-level. It's not a full flagship because, one, it's not the best phone that they make. Two, it doesn't even have Quad HD Plus on it. It's got a 1080p Plus resolution. But that's not anything that we're going to really scoff at because on a 6.1-inch screen, really, your eyes can't hardly tell the difference between Quad HD Plus and 1080p. So not the end of the world. But overall... So far, I mean, I've had the phone for a day. Uh, this is not even in like an initial review. It's more of a, okay, 
And I thought it was funny to say uh, I'm switching from the S23 Ultra. You get so many of these videos and someone's like, I'm switching from the iPhone to the you know, long-time iPhone user switches to the S23 Ultra. S22 Ultra user, long-time Samsung fan switches to the... And you try to get the sensationalism, the clicks, whatever. This is just funny. Uh, I mean, S23 Ultra user switches to S23. Most people are just like scratching their head going, what's wrong with you, right? So... This is not permanent, but I'm going to use this for a couple of weeks. So that way I can give it a fair shake, test it out, put my SIM card in it, daily drive it, and give you my realistic thoughts and expectations on it. Because that's what you're here for. And that's what you deserve. And yeah, maybe a little later than people who got this weeks ago. But here's the thing. A lot of people are going to be looking to buy this phone for the next two years. And this phone is supported for a long time. Four years of operating system updates, five years of security patches, and Samsung is doing it right, and they're leading from the front in the Android world when it comes to updates and support, even beating out Google, who makes the Pixel phones and makes Android. So I'm excited about this. This is going to be fun. I like the smaller form factor, but you don't have to compromise that much because you got a 6.1-inch screen. you got nice cameras, 120 hertz refresh rate, all the things that I really like in a phone but in this nice one-handed form factor experience. So can't wait to test it out in full. Can't wait to share my experience with you. Sound off in the comments. Let me know, is there anything particular about this phone that you're interested about, that you're curious, that you want to know about? So that way, during my testing process, I can try and answer some of these questions for you. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, whatevers, go to the comments section. I'll do my best to get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, if you found this helpful, if you like the S23 phone and the content, then you're in the right place. I cover them here. Hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys next time.